All right, for our top story on We on Fine Print, we are pressing the rewind button for a moment and taking you back to October last year. China saw a leadership overhaul. Seven men, all Xi Jinping loyalists, were chosen in big roles and were mandated to make big decisions. Experts warned that a pack of yes men gave Xi Jinping immense amount of power, but also meant that any mistakes will also be his. It seems like the time has come to hold him accountable. In a matter of four months, five key position holders have been sacked without any explanation. Starting the storm was 57-year-old Ching Gang. He was removed as foreign minister in July and now has been stripped off his position as state councillor. There are five state councillors in the Chinese cabinet and this position is more senior than other ministers. Second in the list is Li Shang Fu. Two months after he disappeared from public life, the defense minister was sacked. Unlike other posts, no one has been named as a replacement. This couldn't have come at a worse time. As we speak, China is preparing to host foreign defense officials in Beijing this week. There's no doubt that these two sunkings have put a dent on Xi Jinping's image because both Qing and Li Shang Fu are believed to be personally selected by President Xi Jinping. Continuing the signs of ill governance, Finance Minister Liu Kun was fired from his post. Beijing has appointed Lan Foan in his place. Science and Technology Minister Wang Jigang was also sacked. The party secretary is holding the reins at the moment. Last in the list is Li Yuchao. He was the commander of People's Liberation Army Rocket Force. He and his deputy were let go, right after which an anti-corruption investigation was launched. This was the biggest unplanned shakeup in Beijing's military leadership in almost a decade. All of these sackings have few things in common. One, Beijing has been awfully quiet about the reasons behind the dismissals. Two, corruption and personal issues have emerged as possible reasons. And three, many of these ministers disappear from public life. It is not clear if they do it out of choice or are made to disappear. This kind of decision-making by Xi Jinping says a lot about China. The country always functions in a state of opacity. And it's not restricted to just politics or even governance. Look at this. This is a book titled Chong Zhen, The Diligent Emperor of a Fallen Dynasty. It talks about the end of China's Ming Dynasty 400 years ago because of its incompetent emperor. And some online discussions, Xi Jinping was compared to this incompetent emperor. So Beijing pulled the book off all shelves across the country. In 2018, China banned a Winnie the Pooh movie because many on the internet talked about the uncanny resemblance between the Chinese president and the cartoon character. China is ruled by a one-party authoritarian dictatorship, but even keeping China's history in mind, Xi Jinping yields unparalleled power. He is the most powerful figure in the Chinese political system. He is the president of China, general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party, heads the National Security Commission and controls committees on economic reform, military restructuring and social welfare. Xi Jinping seems to be paying the price for surrounding himself with yes men. He has been blinded from ground reality because people around him are saying what he wants to hear. And it will be detrimental for a country that dreams of being number one in every race. Jean-Pierre Cabeston is the Emeritus Professor of Political Science at the Hong Kong Baptist University, is also the Emeritus Professor at the French National Center for Scientific Research. He is joining us live from Hong Kong, Professor Jean-Pierre. Welcome to the show. Do you think President Xi Jinping is insecure? Well, actually, uh, there is a sense of paranoia in the uh, Chinese leadership today. Uh, clearly, uh, the uh, people around him uh, are very obedient, but at the same time, there's been a number of uh, um, uh, removals and purges, which indicate that even among his uh, inner circle, people are maybe not loyal enough or 
uh, not uh, obedient enough. And uh, that's been the case of Li Shang Fu, you just mentioned, the defense minister. Now, the official accusation seems to be corruption in this case, but uh, I think it goes beyond corruption. We don't know exactly what the political differences between Xi Jinping and uh, his defense minister are, but uh, clearly uh, there was more than corruption uh, in the uh, in the in the Xi Jinping's relationship with the with the PLA, as you know, a few months ago in the late July of uh, this year, the uh, head and the deputy head of the rocket forces of the PLA were <clears throat> also purged, so and replaced, and we don't know uh, either why they were replaced. But what we know is that they've been replaced by an outsider, one guy coming from the air force, another one from the navy clearly to clean up the mess in the rocket forces. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe put that, Maybe there was also a corruption case there, but uh, again, the, there's a sense of insecurity uh, in, the, in the leadership. It looks like uh, the vetting system doesn't work the way it should work uh, when uh, Xi Jinping uh, comes to appoint new, new figures around him. Professor, the abrupt changes in China's top brass at a time when the country's uh, economic growth is sluggish have been a concern for many uh, analysts and experts. This also comes at the same time that the Chinese foreign minister is heading to the United States. Are you reading something in between the lines? Yes, I mean, there are some speculation like Yi Shangfu actually was uh, opposed to this uh, detente uh, with the United States, uh, and that may be one of the reasons of his uh, sacking, uh, um, you know, disappearance a few, two months ago and his, and his dismissal uh, yesterday. So, uh, but we don't know enough to really make sure that the, that the main reason of his uh, purge. But uh, clearly, it was an embarrassment, an obstacle to resuming meal meal relations between China and the U.S. because he was under sanction mm -hmm. in the U.S. since 2018 because of uh, arms deal with uh, Russia um, going back that year. So I think there are good reasons for Xi Jinping to replace uh, Li Changfu with someone who would be able to go to the U.S. and interact with the the Pentagon and his, uh, and his uh, alter ego in the Biden administration. Right. But the problem is that the Chinese government has not appointed anyone to succeed to him. In the case of Qing Gong, uh, very quickly Wang Yi was, uh, came back as defense, uh, foreign minister. But in the case of Li Shangfu, we don't know who is going to replace him. Uh, there are speculations that maybe... Yes. Professor, sorry to cut you short. Uh, let's just talk about that resumption of high-level uh, military talks with the United States that you mentioned there. Many say, or many observers say that, uh, or they actually believe that Li Shangfu's removal could allow for the resumption of high-level military talks with the United States. Is that really a probability? Well, it's, it's likely. And, uh, it's part of the deal, it's part of the negotiation going on between the U.S. and China. Uh, whether it's going to be achieved, I, uh, well, we don't know yet. Um, that's one of the conditions set by, by the U.S. Uh, uh, the problem is what kind of concession the U.S. is going to make in exchange of, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting this uh, re 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 resumption of mill mill relations. Uh, we don't know. It will be about Taiwan, it will be about other issues. But clearly, that's it, it's a, one of the a top priority of the United States uh, regarding China is to resume military relations. Now, the, the person who may be in charge of that is uh, maybe a lot of people speculate it will be the chief of the general staff, uh, General Li, Li, Li Zhenli. Uh, Liu Zhenli. We, we, we don't know yet, but uh, Liu Zhenli is the rising star of the uh, Central Military Commission okay. because he was born in the 60s, so he's younger than anyone else in the commission, uh, he may be the one to be uh, picked up to resume those talks. All right, I'll be talking to Professor Jean-Pierre Cabestor. Professor, thank you very much for making time for us and for talking to We On while it is one today. You're welcome. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.